Hello guys, welcome to another integration video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, crazy integral from the MIT Integration B uh, from 2023. Now it's not too complex and it's not too difficult. Um, it's kind of different from other integrals that we've done on this channel, but I honestly just love it. I love the way it teaches you how to consider different properties of a function with, instead of just plugging in integration formulas over and over again. So without further ado, Let's jump right into it. Okay, so for the most part, it should be clear that the obvious substitution here is u equals uh, this whole mess. I'm not even going to write it all down. And when we differentiate this, we're going to get basically exactly what's on the top, just negative. So u equals, I'm not even going to write it down, but I'm just going to make the substitution. And so this is a negative du, so we're going to end up with the integral from all we have to do is plug in these numbers so when we plug in negative infinity we're going to get um, all of these things on the bottom are just going to go to infinity so it's going to go to zero and when we go to positive infinity that's going to be the same case so we have the integral from zero to zero which doesn't really make any sense of negative du over one plus u squared so we could finish the integral and plug in arctangent but it's pretty clear that this is just going to go to zero because we have the integral from zero to zero. That's not integrating over any area, right? Well, that's actually wrong. And that's because we have to consider where our function is asymptotic, where it has jump discontinuities and all different kinds of things like that. So first of all, we'll just call this big chunk f of x, right? And obviously the antiderivative of this integral is just negative inverse tangent of f of x, right? And then we have to evaluate it at infinity and negative infinity. The problem is we have to split up this integrand into multiple different areas. So what I mean by that is let's take a look at how our function behaves. Now from negative infinity, it's going to start at zero, right? It starts at zero. And the, the next point of interest that we have is as you can see we have the uh this is a one right there right there we have in the bottom of our function we have uh one over x minus one we have one over x minus three cubed and one over x minus five to the fifth so our points of interest are one minus one plus three minus three plus five minus and five plus so as we approach one from the left side we're actually going to go all the way down to negative infinity because this, this part is going to go to infinity, and these parts will be some constant that doesn't really matter, right? Then, on the right side, it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. And then, our next point of interest, this is at 1, I should say, is that x equals 1. Then, when we look at x equals 3, we're going to have a similar situation. From the left side, it's going to be, since we have cubed here, it's going to go to negative infinity. So this is now x equals 3. It's going to go to negative infinity. And from the right side, it's going to be positive infinity. And of course, at x equals 5, we have the exact same situation. Right? And then it's going to go to positive infinity. And eventually, when we reach uh, x equals positive infinity, it's going to go to 0 because uh, all those things on the bottom will be infinity. So we actually have, right here, we have one area two area, three area, four different integrals that we have to evaluate. So we have the integral from negative infinity to one minus. Now, technically, this should be um, like the limit as b goes to one minus of the integral from negative infinity to b. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it as one minus because I don't want to write out all the limit notation. That's technically what we are talking about here. So we have the integral from negative infinity to 1 minus plus the integral from 1 plus to 3 minus plus the integral from 3 plus to 5 minus plus the integral from 5 plus to positive infinity of uh, this whole thing. I'm not going to write it out every single time. And so what we have to do is we have to now, this is uh, our antiderivative. We just have to evaluate negative inverse tangent of f of x 
evaluate it at 1 minus and negative infinity. We also have to evaluate it at 3 minus and uh, 1 plus, 5 minus and 3 plus, and infinity and 5 plus. Okay, I've gone ahead and made myself some space here just to do all this evaluation. So um, just to be clear, this all this evaluation, this is just adding together. I just didn't want to write out negative inverse tangent of, I'm sorry, this is f of x every single time. So what we're going to end up with is we have negative, then this first one, at 1 minus, f of x is going to go to negative infinity. And that means that inverse tangent of f of x is going to be negative pi over 2. And at negative infinity, f of x just goes all the way to 0. So arctangent of 0 is just 0, so we just have that. Now, for our next evaluation, we have 3 minus and 1 plus. So minus sign just because of this minus sign over here. Now, at 3 minus, uh, none of the other factors are going to, none of the other terms are going to matter except the 1 over x minus 3 cubed, and it's going to be negative infinity. So we have another negative pi over 2 here. Then, we also have, uh, we have to subtract the term, or the, the function evaluated at 1 plus. So at 1 plus, this term right here is going to go to positive infinity, while the other terms are going to remain um, unimportant with respect to that. So when it goes to positive infinity, arctangent is going to be pi over 2. Next, this one uh, with the 3 and the 5 is exactly the same situation as the last term, so I'm just going to write it in there again the same way. And now we have to look at our last one. We're going to subtract. Now, at positive infinity, all these terms are going to go all the way to 0 because they have that x in the bottom. So it's going to be 0. And at 5 plus, uh, the first two terms aren't going to matter, and the term with 5 is going to go to infinity. So inverse tangent of infinity is just pi over 2. So if we add all this together, these are all going to be uh, positive pi over 2. We're going to have pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2. So this is also going to be 1 pi. So overall, our answer is going to be 3 pi. Now, overall, this wasn't a really tough integral, but I love the way that this integral shows that we really do have to consider our functions, uh, their discontinuities and their properties. And even though some of us may kind of skip over in calc 2 or calc bc improper integration because we realize that most of the time we can do the exact same thing we usually do it is important to consider these discontinuities with certain functions because sometimes the functions will jump all over the place but the integral will still, will still converge thank you guys for watching i hope you had a great time and i'll see you in the next video